Deal with shot after shot in your games. It's incredibly frustrating when you are losing fights because you can't hit your skill shots or just your primary fire. What you gotta understand is that your mechanical skill is one of the most important fundamentals if you want to carry games in Overwatch. So we're gonna break everything you need to get insane aim as quickly as possible, but less than 7% of you are subscribed. So if you enjoy the content, do me a solid and press that subscribe button. But let's get right into the video. Now, if you're a console user, the whole first part of the video is about PC settings and equipment. So you can skip it and I'll timestamp it in the description. Now, number one is settings and this is PC specific. And these are the things that you have to do if you want to give yourself the best shot at actually improving You need to go into your computer settings and go to the mouse options and make sure you disable enhanced pointer precision This is a form of mouse acceleration that is really gonna mess up your aim if you don't remove it So yeah, just disable that right away but the next thing that we got to talk about is sensitivity and people ask me this question so much what sensitivity do i use mills which one is best for me i can't find it no matter what sense i play on i feel like i am not hitting my shots now specifically for the majority of dps and aim centric characters characters that you're trying to be very precise with your aim think soldier tracer cassidy anna even characters like zen the ballpark edpi in pro play is between 3000 and 5000 edpi you get your edpi by multiplying your dpi with your mouse with your in-game sense and this is the ballpark that most pros play on for those select characters now does that mean that you have to stick in that box no you can go above it you can go below it but you need to understand that if you're way outside of this range it could be something that is actually holding you back on a fundamental level. And there are abnormalities here. Some people are perfectly confident and comfortable playing at extreme, super, super low or super, super high. But for 99% of people, they should occupy this range with this character type. What I like to say is find a sensitivity that utilizes your entire arm, hand, and fingertips. The best way to describe this is for really huge movements like doing 180s, you're using your arm primarily. For on-screen movements, you're using your hand and wrist. And for the tiny micro flicking where you're just moving your crosser slightly to adjust for someone's head, that is done primarily with your fingertips. Think about this like having a different size paint stroke for different jobs. You have the big strokes for the big objects and really really tiny paint brushes for the really minute details same way with aiming now i did say this is for aim centric characters because tank players and main support players or supports that don't require as much aim you know you could talk about a character like mora hypothetically a character like mercy tanks like ryan and winston that don't require advanced aim there's a lot of pro players that have insanely high EDPIs, like all the way up to 20,000 EDPI, because these characters don't have to be as precise and being able to move around like 180 very easily or 180 multiple times on a dime is actually an advantage if it doesn't affect your aim. You see, the goal of sensitivity is to give yourself the most amount of free movement without hurting your aim. And that's why there has to be like a compromise with how low you can go because ideally if you're just trying to hit the most amount of shots as consistently as possible having super super low sensitivity if you're on a cassidy for instance is actually a big advantage because it stabilizes your aim and allows you to really focus in on those shots but there's a problem and the problem is you're not going to be able to turn around or 180 very quickly. And in a game like Overwatch, you need that. In every FPS, you need that. So there's a balance that needs to be made. And I typically say go as low as you can while still being able to accomplish all of the necessary 180 movements and 90 degree turns that you need to on your character. So that being said, there are certain characters that are abnormalities to the traditional 3,000 to 8,000 range EDPI. And they're characters that need or want to 180 very quickly and aim so characters like genji potentially characters like tracer so it's more likely for these characters to have a higher average sense than characters like widowmaker that don't need to 180 nearly as much 
Now, the true trick here is it's better for you to have the same EDPI across characters. So what that means is if you're someone that plays both Widow and Genji, you typically want to find a happy medium EDPI that works for both characters because you wouldn't want it to be really, really low that improves your Widow, but hurts your Genji because you can't 180 consistently, or really, really high because it improves your Genji blading and 180 aspects, but it ruins your Widowmaker consistent aim. Now, like I said, there is a range here and there's also abnormalities within people. So just because these are some rules that you should think about doesn't mean that you should always follow them. Next off, we got to talk about equipment. And one of the biggest things that will help you improve your aim is actually getting off that 60 hertz monitor and going to 144 hertz or above. Now, I understand not everyone is capable of doing this. It costs money. You need a decent computer to play Overwatch at 144 hertz or above. But I will give you a couple of pointers. First thing is lower down the graphics as much as you possibly can. Even pro players that play on the best of the best computers have all their settings all the way down to low because more frames is always better. You want to make sure that your frames are the highest and this also means making sure that when you're playing Overwatch, you're playing it in full screen and you don't have any other applications open that is drawing from your power. The second thing is get that 144Hz monitor for Christmas, Black Friday, whatever you have to do to get that on sale. Trust me, it's worth it and with computer parts at the cheapest price, we've seen them in quite some time, some small upgrades here and there to your computer could definitely get you above that 144 hertz threshold now last up make sure that you enable your 144 hertz monitor in your computer settings and in overwatch settings i had a friend that was playing overwatch for two years and he didn't realize his 144 hertz monitor was not on it was at 60 hertz <laughs> Next up, let's talk about a mouse. And one thing and one problem that a lot of people that play Overwatch that come from other games like League of Legends or Dota is they have a mouse with a million buttons, a super bulky mouse that is heavy and has all these buttons for macros in a game like League. Now, when you're trying to aim, you want the least amount of resistance, not only with your mouse, but also with the buttons. So this means generally lighter mice. Now, of course, you can have heavier mice. It's personal preference to an extent, but typically 100 grams is the absolute pro gaming hard cap. But more than often, they're going to want something quite a bit less than that. On top of that, using the buttons on your mouse is something that you should try to avoid if possible. You have to understand that when you press a button, it adds extra tension onto you moving the mouse. The idea is to have no resistance at all. So let's say you're trying to hit a sleep and then you're slamming that button on the side to hit it because it's not on your keyboard, it's on your mouse. You're affecting your aim while you're trying to sleep, which is when you need your aim to be the least hindered. So it's a small thing, but it's something that you should try if at all possible. Although not every pro player adheres to this, most of them would agree that it would be preferred if they didn't learn it the wrong way at the start. Now, last up, we got to talk about your mouse pad. Now, mouse pad is one of the few things that I think is true personal preference. People will have glass ice pads because they really want fast movement and they want to glide very easily. And that like favors tank players and Genji mains or whatever the case may be. But I think a high quality thick pad that allows you to push down into your mouse pad to artificially lower your sensitivity when you're trying to take really precise shots can be like the perfect type of mouse pad if you're really struggling with trying to control your sporadic game. And uh, there's a whole bunch of great options, but I personally like artisan pads. You gotta get them imported from Japan, but they're definitely the best of the best. Now in the next section, we're gonna go over four things that will help you dramatically improve your aim so that you can become a mechanical god as quickly as possible. Now, the first thing that you need to understand is that hitting shots in Overwatch is freaking hard. I would say Overwatch is one of the hardest mechanical games period, especially to aim in because of the movement. Now, not only is there no inaccuracy from moving left and right, where there's often a delay and inaccuracy that happens in other games, there's no inaccuracy for jumping, there's no inaccuracy for crouching, and that person can crouch, run left and right, and that makes their head hitbox incredibly sporadic and very, very hard to predict because it can happen on a dime. In addition to that, there are characters that will fly at you at the speed of sound. Characters like Genji and Tracer, where the margin for error is super, super small. 
So not only are these characters moving in a way that is harder to hit than like 99% of FPS's, but in addition to that, these characters put pressure on you and punish you if you miss them and kill you. So it's additional pressure, it's movement, it's hard to hit targets that are small or various sizes, and that just means that hitting shots in Overwatch is hard. But don't worry, you can learn how to hit them consistently and become an FPS god just forever. You'll be good at every FPS if you can hit shots consistently in Overwatch. The first thing that you need to master is your movement. You need to move in a way that doesn't ruin your aim. Far too often when I'm VOD reviewing a player, there's someone that is completely outside the effective range of the person they're fighting, or the person they're fighting isn't even paying attention to them. So a Widowmaker that is really far away, or a Cassidy that is shooting at a Genji when the Genji is fighting someone else. You need to move in a way that doesn't hurt your aim. This means long strafes or even standing still. Because if you're moving left and right and crouch spamming, you're really messing up your own aim. It's gonna be hard for you to get that kill. Now I'm not telling you not to move, and I have a complete movement guide on this channel that you can go check out if you want more information on the topic, but basically if you are a character that is more lethal in the matchup, then you should be focusing on hitting your shots. If you're Cassidy up against Samora, you should be focusing on hitting your shots rather than dodging, because you can't dodge, and if you hit your shots you'll win the duel. If you're a, you know, soldier up against a Widowmaker, you should focus on your movement instead, because not only does your movement movement affect your aim less because you're spraying a ton of bullets, but that Widow could end the fight instantly if you give her an easy shot, and you would rather the duel take longer because that means that you're probably winning it. Now the third thing, and this is a big mistake that will prevent a lot of you from improving, is hyper-focusing on aim trainers or aim arena. Ultimately, aim trainers don't work past a certain point. And there's a primary level of aim trainers, like Kovacs and aim labs. If you are a true new, someone who has not played any FPS shooters before, or if you're testing your setup, like your new mouse or your new mouse pad, these things can be good to develop a baseline level of aim, but there's a point when it doesn't translate into gaming anymore. You could be a god at aim trainers, and I actually know a lot of them that are god at aim trainers, but they're hard stuck plat. We talked about the movement, the sporadic nature, the pressure. None of this stuff is being replicated in an aim trainer. And when we do talk about something like aim arena, it is much better than an aim trainer because you get used to the weapons that you're gonna be using, you get used to the hitboxes and the movement, but the problem is it's still not replicated that pressure and that pressure is a really important part in hitting your shots because you're never gonna be able to just hit shots in an isolated setting you're not just standing there and your enemies aren't doing anything they're all actively trying to contest you or kill you and that's when you need to hit your shots in addition to that, when you're playing aim arena, you're not under pressure. So your movement doesn't actually matter because you're going to die and respawn. So your movement could get lazy. You're not learning the proper movement to win a matchup. You're not panicking because you don't care if you die. And those all kind of come together to just make aim arena not really the best practice either. Now, it's a lot better than aim trainers, and I would say it's actually fantastic for warming up. But if you really want to better your aim, I will suggest this to the end of time. Try hard free for all this is a special custom mode that actually removes all of the non aim intensive characters and abilities in the game and basically brings the game to a death match that has only skill characters in it this helps you practice your aim, practice that pressure, and have a ton of 1v1s with your character of choice. And one of the best things about this is that you get to go up against players that are not in your rank. If you go to Tried Free For All, you'll run into Masters players, Grandmaster, Top 500 players. I've been in Tried Free For All and I've ran into pro players before. You'll get experience going up against players far better than the rank you're playing at and you can learn from them and also test yourself against better and better players and improve your mechanical skill in the process. I cannot suggest try free for all enough, but it's still not the best way to improve your aim. And the best way to really improve your aim is just playing the game a lot while focusing on aiming. This means playing comp and grinding your aim specifically, trying to hit each and every shot, focusing on your movement, making sure your settings are tuned in and making sure that you're not in a situation where you're only breaking away your rust. This is a big problem with players that really come to Overwatch and they play it for a little bit and then they take a break. Then they come back and then they play it for a little bit and take a break. Haven't you ever noticed that if you don't play for a while, 
When you come back, you're not even playing at the peak that you were at, and then it takes a while of you playing before you're even back to your old form. The only true way to see improvement is when you're playing at your absolute pinnacle. So you can't be rusty and you can't be washed. You have to be playing at your best to push past that. I think of it almost like a muscle. That's like an analogy, right? You want to lift until failure so that your muscles grow back stronger. It's similar in this regard where you want to have multiple consistent games with your aim at its all-time peak and that's the way that you increase your all-time peak now the last thing and this is going to be one that might be a bit controversial but it's really important if you want to improve not only at your aim but just in overwatch in general one of the things that can really hold you back is if you play too many other first person shooters now you can play whatever you want chess league of legends team fight tactics magic the gathering i don't care but if you keep playing other fps apex valor and just like cycle between all these other fps you are actually hurting your development in overwatch in particular because you're not only not playing overwatch enough to actually improve your aim and focusing on aim specific stuff in overwatch but doing too much of that at once overlaps very poorly and you could actually hinder your progress so i would say if you're really trying to improve at overwatch in particular focus only on overwatch as your fps of choice and then for casual gaming or a break from overwatch play non-fps games now if you enjoyed the video please press that subscribe button and let me know down below what video do you want to see next thank you for coming by and i'll see you next time